chapters 25 to 28. Chapter 25 I appeal unto Caesar. Acts 25 verses 1 to 3 Now when Festus was come into the province, after three days he ascended from Caesarea to Jerusalem. Then the high priest and the chief of the Jews informed him against Paul and besought him and desired favor against him that he would send for him to Jerusalem, laying wait in the way to kill him. The high priest and the chief of the Jews, the religious leaders were planning to kill the apostle, Paul, this shows you the spiritual state of Israel's religious leaders. Acts 25 verses 4 to 6 But Festus answered that Paul should be kept at Caesarea, and that he himself would depart shortly thither. Let them therefore, said he, which among you are able, go down with me, and accuse this man, if there be any wickedness in him. And when he had tarried among them more than ten days, he went down unto Caesarea, and the next day sitting on the judgment seat commanded Paul to be brought. The judgment seat the beam of seat. Acts 25 verses 7 to 12 And when he was come, the Jews which came down from Jerusalem stood round about, and laid many and grievous complaints against Paul, which they could not prove. While he answered for himself, neither against the law of the Jews, neither against the temple, nor yet against Caesar, have I offended anything at all. But Festus, willing to do the Jews a pleasure, answered Paul, and said, Wilt thou go up to Jerusalem, and there be judged of these things before me? Then said Paul, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat, where I ought to be judged. To the Jews have I done no wrong, as thou very well knowest. For if I be an offender, or have committed anything worthy of death, I refuse not to die. But if there be none of these things whereof these accuse me, no man may deliver me unto them. I appeal unto Caesar. Then Festus, when he had conferred with the council, answered, Hast thou appealed unto Caesar? Unto Caesar shalt thou go. I stand at Caesar's judgment seat, where I ought to be judged. Israel had no jurisdiction over Paul because he had committed no crime in Israel. Paul said if he were guilty of speaking against the law, he would gladly allow them to put him to death. Since he was speaking of the very hope of the nation of Israel, their resurrection, he would not allow them to judge him, because he was a Roman. I appeal unto Caesar, now Paul would finally have his audience with Caesar. How could he get an appointment to stand before Caesar to appeal to him? Either by Roman law, or at the request of the emperor, Paul was arrested in order to appeal as a Roman citizen before the emperor. Paul was really the prisoner of Jesus Christ, not Rome. Ephesians 3 verse 1 and Philemon 1 verse 1 and 9. Acts 25 verses 13 to 19 And after certain days King Agrippa and Bernice came unto Caesarea to salute Festus. And when they had been there many days, Festus declared Paul's cause unto the king, saying, There is a certain man left in bonds by Felix, about whom, when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me, desiring to have judgment against him. To whom I answered, It is not the manner of the Romans to deliver any man to die, before that he which is accused have the accusers face to face and have license to answer for himself concerning the crime laid against him. Therefore, when they were come hither, without any delay on the morrow I sat on the judgment seat and commanded the man to be brought forth against whom when the accuser stood up, they brought none accusation of such things as I supposed, but had certain questions against him of their own superstition, and of one Jesus, which was dead, whom Paul affirmed to be alive. King Agrippa, this is Herod Agrippa. The manner of the Romans, Roman law protected Roman citizens from abuses by non-Romans. Paul used his Roman citizenship to get before as many leaders of Rome as possible with the truth of God's word. News would spread of this famous prisoner and his thwarting of those who were trying to have him killed. Paul would use God's word, his wits, as well as his citizenship to get him to his final destination, Rome. Acts 25 verses 20 to 27 And because I doubted of such manner of questions, I asked him whether he would go to Jerusalem, and there be judged of these matters. But when Paul had appealed to be reserved unto the hearing of Augustus, I commanded him to be kept till I might send him to Caesar. Then Agrippa said unto Festus, I would also hear the man myself. Tomorrow, 
said he, Thou shalt hear him. And on the morrow, when Agrippa was come, and Bernice, with great pomp, and was entered into the place of hearing, with the chief captains, and principal men of the city, at Festus' commandment Paul was brought forth. And Festus said, King Agrippa, and all men which are here present with us, ye see this man, about whom all the multitude of the Jews have dealt with me, both at Jerusalem, and also here, crying that he ought not to live any longer. But when I found that he had committed nothing worthy of death, and that he himself hath appealed to Augustus, I have determined to send him, of whom I have no certain thing to write unto my Lord. Wherefore I have brought him forth before you, and specially before thee, O King Agrippa, that, after examination had, I might have somewhat to write. For it seemeth to me unreasonable to send a prisoner, and not withal to signify the crimes laid against him. This was not the first time Israel's leaders would try to get around Roman law, but it would be Felix who would lose his job if he sent a prisoner to Augustus Caesar without having any charges filed against. Chapter 26 Paul's Salvation Testimony Acts 26 verses 1 to 8 Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand, and answered for himself, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee touching all the things whereof, I am accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews, wherefore I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which was, at the first among mine own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify, that after the most straightest sect of our religion I lived a Pharisee. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, unto which promise our twelve tribes, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you, that God should raise the dead? A Pharisee, it is from the Hebrew word paras meaning to separate. The hope of the promise, Israel's hope is the resurrection into their earthly kingdom one day. The big problem with Paul is that he claimed Jesus was the Christ, and that Israel had killed their Christ, and that the resurrection was through that very same person, for Jesus had said to Mary. John 11 verse 25 I am the resurrection and the life, he that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews, the Jews didn't like Paul preaching about the resurrection of the dead through Jesus Christ. Acts 26 verses 9 to 11 I verily thought with myself, that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests, and when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. And I punished them oft in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme, and being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Even unto strange cities, Gentile cities, such as Damascus. Acts 26 verses 12 to 18 Whereupon as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven, above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. But rise, and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people, and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes, and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins, and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Unto whom now I send thee, Paul was told this while he was lying on the ground near Damascus some twenty years earlier. He was to go to the Gentiles soon after his salvation experience. 
Acts 26 verses 19 to 20 Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but should first unto them of Damascus, and at Jerusalem, and throughout all the coasts of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God, and do works meet for repentance. Damascus, when, just after his salvation he went and preached to the Jews there that Jesus was the Christ. Acts 9 verses 19 to 22. At Jerusalem, when he went up to Jerusalem after the Jews tried to kill him in Damascus, after his time in Arabia. Act 9, 23-29. Throughout all the coasts of Judea, this is when Paul said that he was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea which were in Christ. Galatians 1 verse 22. And then to the Gentiles, beginning with Sergius Paulus in Acts 13. Repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. Repent means to change your mind. God repented when he changed his mind about what he was going to do concerning Israel. Acts 26 verses 21 to 23 For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer, and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead, and should shew light unto the people, and to the Gentiles. Isaiah 60 verse 3 And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Isaiah 42 verse 6 I the Lord have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thine hand, and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles. Saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, we know exactly what Paul said to the Jews because he told us in verse 23. You don't tell a lost Jew about the mystery program before you tell them about Jesus being the fulfillment of the prophecy program. Paul three times mentions the word Gentiles, and yet people still say there are no Gentiles saved until Acts 20 or 28. No amount of men's arguments, however, can take away the word Gentiles in this chapter. This chapter is about Paul retelling what God told him to do and who he was to do it with. Acts 26 verses 24 to 29, And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself, much learning doth make thee mad. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of these things before whom also I speak freely, for I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God, that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day, were both almost, and altogether such as I am, except these bonds. Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian, this is now the second time the term Christian is used in scripture. It is first used of those in Antioch of Syria, Acts 11 verse 16, where Paul began helping Barnabas. Paul did not discourage the use of the title of Christian that was well known to all, even King Agrippa. Nowhere does it say in scripture that anyone, but John was a Baptist. John was called the singular Baptist. Paul was very clear in preaching to these people, and he wasn't worried about them not believing what he said. He was only worried about saying what God wanted to be said and what his listeners needed to hear. Acts 26 verses 30 to 32, And when he had thus spoken, the king rose up, and the governor, and Bernice, and they that sat with them, and when they were gone aside, they talked between themselves, saying, This man doeth nothing worthy of death or of bonds. Then said Agrippa unto Festus, This man might have been set at liberty, if he had not appealed unto Caesar. Chapter 27 Paul is shipwrecked Acts 27 verse 1 And when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus' band. A centurion of Augustus' band, a soldier that is over a band of 100 men. Augustus was the Caesar that Paul appealed unto in Acts 25 verses 11 to 25. 
Acts 27 verse 2 And entering into a ship of Adramidium, we launched, meaning to sail by the coasts of Asia, one Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, being with us. Aristarchus, he is first mentioned in Acts 1929, 20 4 and in Colossians 4 verse 10 as his fellow prisoner. He was not a prisoner during Paul's first imprisonment, only his second when it appears that Rome was less tolerant of Christianity. Luke includes himself in the we and us in verse 2 as being a part of Paul's team. He, Lucas, had been with Paul since Acts 16, Acts 27 verse 3, and the next day we touched at Sidon. And Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go unto his friends to refresh himself. Julius courteously entreated Paul. Paul had obviously made a great impression on the centurion who was responsible for getting Paul to Rome because he allowed him to go see some friends in the area. Gave him liberty. This is a term still used today for sailors who are allowed to leave their ships for a short while. Paul was not a flight risk because he didn't want to escape his captors. He wanted to stand before Caesar to tell Rome's leaders and the world the gospel of the grace of God. Acts 27 verses 4 to 12 And when we had launched from thence, we sailed under Cyprus, because the winds were contrary. And when we had sailed over the sea of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we came to Myra, a city of Lycia. And there the centurion found a ship of Alexandria sailing into Italy, and he put us therein. And when we had sailed slowly many days, and scarce were come over against Nidus, the wind not suffering us, we sailed under Crete, over against Samini and, hardly passing it, came unto a place which is called the Fair Havens, nigh whereunto was the city of Lacia. Now when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them, and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship, more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to Phenis, and there to winter, which is in haven of Crete, and leath toward the southwest and northwest. The fast was now already past. This refers to the time of the year when you could make good time sailing. Acts 27 verses 13 to 26 And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosing thence, they sailed close by Crete. But not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind, called Euroclidon. And when the ship was caught, and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. And running under a certain island which is called Clauda, we had much work to come by the boat, which when they had taken up, they used helps, undergirding the ship, and, fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, strake sail, and so were driven. And we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship, and the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But after long abstinence Paul stood forth in the midst of them, and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me, and not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am, and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and, lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. Howbeit we must be cast upon a certain island. There stood by me this night the angel of God. This prophetic announcement along with its fulfillment helped some of those present on that day to consider the God that Paul spoke about who could deliver them all from the ragging sea. Acts 27 verses 27 to 28 But when the fourteenth night was come, as we were driven up and down in Adria, about midnight the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country, and sounded and found it twenty fathoms, and when they had gone a little further, they sounded again, and found it fifteen fathoms. Fathoms, a fathom is six feet, the height of a man. 
Acts 27 verses 29 to 44 Then fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea, under color as though they would have cast anchors out of the fore ship, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, Except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let her fall off. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Wherefore I pray you to take some meat, for this is for your health, for there shall not an hair fall from the head of any of you. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread, and gave thanks to God in presence of them all, and when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then were they all of good cheer, and they also took some meat. And we were in all in the ship two hundred three score and sixteen souls. And when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship, and cast out the wheat into the sea. And when it was day, they knew not the land, but they discovered a certain creek with a shore, into the which they were minded, if it were possible, to thrust in the ship. And when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves unto the sea, and loosed the rudder bands, and hoist up the mainsail to the wind, and made toward shore. And falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the forepart stuck fast, and remained unmovable, but the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves. And the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose, and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea, and get to land, and the rest, some on boards, and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass, that they escaped all safe to land. Things happened just as Paul had been told by the angel. Paul was safe regardless of what any man or group wanted to do to him. He must stand before Caesar, and he used a centurion to stop the soldiers who wanted to kill the prisoners to keep them from escaping. He reached at least one on that ship by his words. Chapter 28 Paul Reaches Rome Way back in Acts chapter 9.15 God tells Saul of Tarsus that he was going to send him to bear his name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Now he is about to reach the Gentile world capital, Rome. Things begin to change once Paul gets to Rome. More revelations are given to him from the risen Savior, and Paul's ability to heal is taken from him as the dispensation of God is fully given to him for us, to fulfill the word of God. Colossians 1 verse 25 Whereof I am made a minister, according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you, to fulfill the word of God. Acts 28 verses 1 to 2 And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people shewed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire, and received us every one, because of the present rain, and because of the cold. The island was called Melita, ancient name for Malta. The barbarous people, barbarians, non-Greek speaking Gentiles. Verse 4 below. No little kindness, they showed much kindness. Acts 28 verses 3 to 6 And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom, though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly, but after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god, a viper, a poisonous snake. God allowed Paul to survive a venomous snake bite to be a sign to these barbarians that God was working in their midst. The barbarians were Gentiles. Acts 28 verses 7 to 10 in the same quarters were possessions of the chief men of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. 
So, when this was done, others also, which had diseases in the island, came and were healed, who also honored us with many honors, and when we departed, they laded us with such things as were necessary. A bloody flux, dysentery. A gastrointestinal disorder. Notice Dr. Luke gets specific about this person's symptoms, but he is not healing anyone. God is through Paul, not Luke. Paul entered in and prayed and laid hands on him and healed him again. Luke the physician had nothing to do with anyone getting healed here. Others also, which had diseases in the island, came and were healed. We see Paul here healing many which would have paved the way for him to witness to them. But again, Luke records nothing of anyone getting saved here. This was Paul's last time that he would ever heal anyone ever again, because once he arrived at Rome, he would no longer be able to heal. That was because the sign gifts were to cease after that which was perfect, complete, was come, the word of God. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 10 But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. It would be at Rome that Paul would receive the prison epistles from God with many new revelations for the church. Trophimus was Paul's close friend, but three years later Paul tells us something interesting concerning him. 2 Timothy For twenty Trophimus have I left at my Miletum sick. Why would a man that had the ability that Paul had not sent him a handkerchief to heal him as he was able to do in the past? Paul no longer had the power. It ceased as did all the sign gifts when the apostle of the Gentiles reached the Gentile capital. It was at Miletum where he left Trophimus sick. Paul was about to receive the last of his revelations from the ascended Lord, but not until he was in Rome, the capital of the Roman Empire. These epistles would make no mention of Israel having a prominent place with God in the present dispensation of grace. That was because of their diminishing and fall recorded in the book of Romans. Israel will be restored when they come into their earthly kingdom and every promise God ever made to them will come to pass. Paul also tells us that the sign gifts were only temporary until that which is perfect is come, Paul would receive the final revelations to complete the word of God over the next few years. 1 Corinthians 13 Acts 28 verse 11 And after three months we departed in a ship of Alexandria, which had wintered in the isle, whose sign was Castor and Pollux. Whose sign was Castor and Pollux? the twins of Greek mythology in the constellation Gemini and the Zodiac and are attributed with saving people in trouble at sea. It is interesting that this is mentioned immediately after Paul's shipwreck at Melita. Acts 28 verses 12 to 15 and landing at Syracuse, we tarried there three days. And from thence we fetched a compass and came to Regium, and after one day the south wind blew, and we came the next day to Putili, where we found brethren and were desired to tarry with them seven days, and so we went toward Rome. And from thence, when the brethren heard of us, they came to meet us as far as Appii Forum and the three taverns, whom when Paul saw, he thanked God and took courage. Where we found brethren, this would have most likely been Jewish brethren who would gladly take in fellow Jews. Because there was no mention of sharing the gospel while they stayed in Putili, many believed that they were already believers, but were they kingdom saints or fellow grace believers? We don't know. When the brethren heard of us, they came to meet us. These brethren knew of Paul and his companions' reputation because when they heard of them, they came to meet them from afar. These could be some of the people mentioned in Romans 16. Appii Forum and the Three Taverns, they were near Rome along the Appian Way. The three taverns were not bars, but three shops at the last major stop before getting to Rome. Acts 28 verse 16 And when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard, but Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with a soldier that kept him. Paul was suffered to dwell by himself, Paul was allowed to stay in his own hired house because he was a Roman citizen, provided that a soldier kept him secured while awaiting trial. 
Acts 28 verse 17, And it came to pass, that after three days Paul called the chief of the Jews together, and when they were come together, he said unto them, Men, and brethren, though I have committed nothing against the people, or customs of our fathers, yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. The chief of the Jews, the leaders of synagogues of Rome, the hands of the Romans, he was arrested and handed over to the Roman officials. Acts 28 verses 18 to 20 Who, when they had examined me, would have let me go, because there was no cause of death in me. But when the Jews spake against it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar, not that I had ought to accuse my nation of. For this cause therefore have I called for you, to see you, and to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. For the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain, the hope of Israel is the hope of the resurrection. Jesus Christ is the resurrection. Acts 23 verse 6 and 2400 hours 21. John 11 verse 25 Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life, he that believeth in me. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. Acts 28 verses 21 to 22 And they said unto him, We neither received letters out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that came shewed or spake any harm of thee. But we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest, for as concerning this sect, we know that every word is spoken against. As concerning this sect, a sect is a branch of something. Christianity was seen as a branch of Judaism. Acts 24 verse 6. Acts 28 verse 23 And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, from morning till evening. He expounded and testified the kingdom of God. He used the writings of Moses and the prophets to teach the Jews that Jesus was Israel's Savior. Acts 28 verses 24 to 27 And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed, after that Paul had spoken one word, well spake the Holy Ghost by Esaias the prophet unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people, and say, Hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not perceive, for the heart of this people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Isaiah 6 verses 9 to 10 And he said, Go, and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. Strike 3 Israel Acts 28 verse 28 Be it known therefore unto you, that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. Strike 1 came after Paul and Barnabas were separated by the Holy Spirit from the congregation in Antioch of Syria to the work, he had called them unto an Antioch of Pisidia, and the Jews there rejected the word or God. Acts 13 verse 46 Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Strike 2 came in Corinth where Paul was preaching in the synagogue there and many of the Jews rejected the word of God. Acts 18 verse 6 I will go unto the Gentiles. What was the one word that caused many of the Jews to quit listening to Paul? Gentiles. Why was that? Because all Jews knew that Israel must be restored back in the land with the Messiah reigning before they were to be a light unto the Gentiles in the kingdom. Isaiah 60 verses 1 to 3 Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For, behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. They didn't want to accept that God had put Israel's program on hold, and he had ushered in the dispensation of grace where Jews and Gentiles were on the same level. The middle wall of partition had come down, 
Jews and Gentiles could both become part of the body of Christ. The Gentile would not have to become a part of Israel to have salvation because of Israel's blindness. Romans 11 verse 25 Acts 28 verse 28 The salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles. This was now the third and last time that the Jews were told by Paul that God was taking the message to the Gentiles because the Jews for the most part would not listen to the word of God and be converted. Notice the change from Barnabas and Paul on the first trip to just Paul on the second trip to Paul arrested and others would have to now pick up where Paul left off. This three-point outline will preach. Acts 28 verses 29 to 31 And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house. He was under house arrest because he was a Roman citizen. This was not afforded to non-Roman citizens. Preaching the kingdom of God, this is not the same thing as preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Paul never preached the gospel of the kingdom because that message was prophesied in the scriptures. Paul preached the mystery program, which was not mentioned in the scriptures, but was kept hidden from the foundation of the world. Romans 16 verses 25 to 26. His message grew as more revelations came to him. The books of Ephesians, Colossians, Philippians, and Philemon had not been given to Paul until he spent two years in a Roman prison. Acts 28 1 Timothy and Titus were both written after Paul's short release from prison in 63 AD, while 2 Timothy finds Paul back in jail, awaiting his death. The book of Hebrews is not a Pauline epistle because chapter 2 is very clear who the writer heard his message from, it was from the twelve apostles. Paul did not receive his message from man, but from the ascended Christ. Galatians 1 verse 11 and 12 As the kingdom was gradually withdrawn from Israel, the miracles began to cease, and the Jews were blinded nationally. All the while the doctrines of the body of Christ were progressively being revealed to the Apostle Paul by revelation. The End